What's up, buddy? Okay, so I've got a little bit of a dilemma. I pulled this fender off and I pulled the bumper off as well. <clears throat> um, to, yeah, <laughs> yeah, to, to try, just try to see what all was entailed or what, what all it would take to try to, um, uh, I wanted to trim this arch. Actually, I really, really, really wanted to just cut it right along that line, but I wasn't really for sure what all this was. And, uh, the real bummer of it is that, hey, buddy, dude, I'm busy. Yeah, I know, I know. Say hi. Say hi. All right, get out of here. Get out, get out, get out. He's not gonna. All right, leave me alone for a minute. So these bolts here, um, the way, the way Subaru, and I'm sure it's not just Subaru, it's, it's probably a lot of folks, but the way they do them is they've got these stupid captured nuts here and it's like plastic junk. Um, and, and so when you, if it's more than three days old and you try to turn that thing, it's just gonna break all the plastic off and then the nut's gonna spin. So I had to grind them off, <clears throat> which means I'm gonna have to figure out how to put the fender back on. <laughs> uh, and to get the, uh, they call it something else, seal, seal trim, I think, but it's the rocker trim, covers this up right here. And to get at this bolt, and there's a bolt, or a, yeah, up under there, which this thing's kind of stupid. I don't know why it's there. I'm sure it has a purpose, but it's kind of dumb. To get to that, you got to pull the rocker trim. You can't pull the rocker trim until you get those out and the mud flaps right there, which my mud flap was torn up anyway, so it needed to go. And then the fender liner is embedded in all that too. So it's a bit of a, it was a bit of a pain. Um, the rest of it wasn't hard. Like these are easy to get to. The bolts up on top were easy to get to. Once you know what's under here, that's not hard. And then I started pulling this off. I probably shouldn't have, but at first I was thinking I would just tear this off and then trim the, uh, trim. I thought I could trim this. Well, it's lined up with the fender on this side. So I would have to trim the fender too. So I don't know. I'm, I'm in sort of a dilemma. One of the thoughts I had was just to tear this off, trim the fender and then, uh, and then get some sheet metal. And I got really close to ordering some sheet metal and I was going to just make a new flare that came up about here and then either roll the either roll the fender metal out probably not since it's like that but um either do that or just get some other sheet metal and make a new and weld it you know so that i had a nice arch i like the arches on these and i wanted to preserve that shape if i could um but i don't know it no matter i don't have the tools to do that or the space really so it was going to be kind of shoddy and really i only need extra space on the front and the back and so i also thought about trimming this right here but that would kind of mess up the shape so uh, i don't really know what to do on it and i didn't know if anybody out there had <clears throat> experience with modifying these fenders on a subaru outback or impreza or something like that <clears throat> if you'd had any luck with trimming those out to fit bigger tires under them okay so the, just to illustrate kind of what i'm dealing with here <clears throat> and this is this is not to scale <laughs> specifically this nose is a little bit too short one of the outback's big weaknesses <clears throat> is this giant schnoz sticking out here on the front and it should probably be more out like that but um this will do the trick and that kind of ruins your approach angles and stuff like that so like i said i originally my problems are right there and right there and um there's a lot of people that I've talked to online and they seem to be able to fit bigger tires in there. <clears throat> I don't exactly know how big of a tire I'm going to try to go with, but I'm not trying to squeeze uh, too much rubber under there. Uh, but if you remember, I've got a, a one inch about, it's more like three quarters on the front and one in the back. <clears throat> so um, I've got a little bit extra here. And I'm not too worried about the top of this arch, but I'm already with stock tires really close on the front and back. So if I go bigger, I've got to carve out space here and here. <clears throat> and 
and like I said, I wanted to just trim that whole wheel arch on the front and back. Um, but that's, that's looking like it's going to be really, really tricky. So one thing, and I, I'm actually leaning more towards this right now, <clears throat> is uh, if I just remove this front bumper, I've got some stuff there that I need to hide. There's like the coolant reservoir, or not coolant, um, uh, washer <clears throat> fluid up here. I kind of want to keep that covered up as much as I can. But if I just remove this, which means getting rid of the fog lights because they sit about right here. The fog lamps do in in the bumper this whole thing comes off and then i've got all the clearance i need right there i would still need to trim up back here but that's a lot less of an issue you can only trim back so far anyway because of the door and the back is even worse like this comes down in the back doors it's right up against that flare on the back <clears throat> so uh so that's problematic but um then i could just make a new bumper which I've done before, actually. <laughs> it wasn't as, uh, it didn't have to look as nice as this, but I could get, you know, a little bit extra on the front <clears throat> on clearance, and I'd have to remove those fog lights. I would put some LEDs or, or something on the bumper um, to get that back if I needed it, and then I'd just have to try to come back and, and cover this stuff up the best I can. I don't necessarily need to tie into the fender, but I would try to dress that out somehow, like, I don't know what I would do, but try to dress that out. <clears throat> And then I could put like a push bar. I was going to get a make a push bar for it anyway, but I could put like some sort of a push bar on it as well. I could attach a skid plate down here. So there's some other stuff down here that I'd kind of have to worry about, maybe trimming up some um, splash guards and things like that. I would have to trim the, the fender liner short here a little bit. And then again, I'd have to trim this back here somehow, which I don't really want to do, but I could, you know, I could maybe just trim it down ever so slightly. <clears throat> And then do something there. I don't know what I would do exactly, but do something there to seal it up. There's a wire loom that comes in behind the splash guard back here somewhere. And I'd want to keep it uh, covered up as well. So uh, that's all. Uh, this is a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm And I'm making this video to just kind of um, document some of my ideas that I'm having. And see if anybody out there has any uh, other ideas of how to help doing this because I don't want this to look too shoddy. I don't mind it looking a little shoddy, but I, m mostly I want it sealed up and I want it where it's not going to be flapping in the wind and all that kind of stuff. And uh, the basic idea behind this build is, um, you know, you can go, they say, up to two inches on these lifts um, and then you get bigger tires and trim. And, th and that looks, that's a really good look, but I've also, I've heard mixed, um, you know, some people, they don't have CV problems with a two-inch lift. Some people do. I'm trying to keep it as reliable as possible. So that's why I only went th with the three-quarter and the one. And now I think the bigger the tire you can get here, you're keeping your CG as low as possible. And you're getting a lot more ground clearance without having to raise this body up. Um, so, so that's why I like the idea of, I, I don't mind a little bit of lift here. Um, I wish I could get more suspension travel. S sus did I say that right? Suspension travel. Anyway, um, but the more rubber I can fit under here, I'll get I'll get ground clearance out of that um, without raising the CG more than I have to. You know, it's a low CG anyway. Um, that's one of the benefits of the of the Outback uh, and these Subarus. You could do a little bit really easily. You can't do a lot, so they're they're sort of limited. And I'm looking for getting the most out of this as I can without doing something drastic like a four or a six inch lift, which looks really cool. And those guys that do them and drop all the drive line and everything down uh, to make the angles work out correctly. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed by those builds. I just don't want to do it. So uh, anyway, anybody out there that has any ideas on the best way to do this or things that they think might work or any help they can offer, I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.